Welcome to the Heron Hats Podcast. My name is Julio, and I'm joined today by some friends and fellow Inter Miami fans, Dave and Chris. And on behalf of the guys, we want to thank you for joining us for episode 21 here on the Heron Hats Podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. You will notice that we are down a man tonight. Jose is out because his son is under the weather, so we hope that he gets back on his feet soon. And we're missing you, Jose. We wish you the best in that. Uh, For those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for stopping by, and make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're enjoying the show. In today's episode, we will be discussing Miami's upcoming match against Orlando City on Sunday. And we want to give a huge shout-out to our chief, Heronhead Matias. Thank you so much for your generous support. Additionally, thank you to our other uh, supporters on Patreon, Art, Brian, Kevin, James, and Karen. Choochie! If you feel so inclined to support us on Patreon, you will find a link in the description wherever you are listening. And if you don't feel so inclined, that's totally okay, too. We appreciate you being here. So we had a great time yesterday talking about the 4-1 win over Toronto, other than Messi having to leave the pitch in 30 minutes uh, or after 30 minutes. So now we are faced with the daunting task of heading to Orlando uh, it's already been confirmed that Messi and Alba will not be making the trip. So, what is uh, what, what's the pulse check around here? How are we feeling, and uh, what are we looking forward to in this match? I think uh, we're looking forward to seeing what we've always been talking about: seeing our players take that step. We need to see without Messi. Obviously, we're not going to have him or Alba, so we're going to be relying on on Busquets to provide that that leadership role. But what I'm most looking forward to is seeing how um, how Allen, how Noah Allen's being used. Um, we know that they're they're forced to rely on him. They don't have anybody else to release to play in, in place of Alba. So we're gonna have Noah Allen back there. So I'm I'm curious to see if we go five back or four back and see the the tactics that we deploy from from that that uh, standpoint and and to see if if we kind of do something interesting with uh, with with Yedlin because we know we're going to get Alba I mean we know we're going to get uh No Island and he is not great at pushing the ball forward so maybe they do some kind of off off balance attack or something like that so I don't know I'm curious to see what what Tata comes up with with uh with that situation in the back It's Florida Derby guys it's rivalry in state rivalry we got uh, Orlando. We're, I was going to say Orlando's coming here, but no, we're going to Orlando. We're going to their house. Uh, should be a nice nice environment over there. We, um, In honor of Jose not being here, I'm curious to see how Orlando's going to muck it up. So what we've seen is that or- Orlando's statistically, they, they're not impressive. You see them and you're like, oh, this is, this is more or less of an average team. But they're at the top of the leaderboards. They're they're second or second or third in the East, um, and you watch them play, and it's like, yeah, it's a second. You watch them play, and, and it's nothing very impressive. But what you do see is that they're very aggressive. Um, they they like to they like to throw some fouls here and there. They like to get a little dirty, you know. Um, and we saw it in the last match against against us. They they were getting messy, really mad in there, messy obviously almost got thrown out it was really close to it um so I'm, I'm curious to see how they how they react to Messi not being there obviously if they still stick to that kind of uh um dirty play or or how they do which seems like that's what they do so um I'm, I'm curious to see how 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 they play that in that aspect yeah I wouldn't call it dirty so much as I call it just very aggressive very aggressive they they almost yeah. just want to get under your skin to force you to make mistakes and to force you to look over your shoulder. And that's going to be huge with our midfield because they're going to be looking for answers that are not named Messi when they get the ball and kind of turn up field. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting heading into the lines. Then I, I, I'm this weird mix of going between pretty confident, which is kind of unfounded and then being really nervous that we're going to get smashed. We haven't had the best of, results against teams the second time we face them since Messi's joined the team. It seems like that starstruck factor is kind of gone. And I don't necessarily think Orlando was starstruck, but we hit them early. This was back in the league's cup when we were scoring really early every match. And yeah, to your point, Dave, I'm I don't know 
I don't know what I want to see between a five at the back or four at the back. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. Like I don't know if our defense just gets shredded with four at the back. Our defense was also not necessarily great with the five at the back. The thing that I do know is that Orlando is going to give us opportunities to score, and this is the type of game where we cannot miss those opportunities. To that end, let's just talk about Joseph and Campana. With the U.S. Open Cup final coming Wednesday following this match, so three days after this match, what do you guys think that that does with with the striker position specifically? I'm going to go off on a limb here and say both of them start. I don't think we've seen both Joseph and Campana be on the pitch at the same time to start a game, have we? Definitely not. Yeah, I think he might go with something different there. Um, I I wouldn't be ama- I wouldn't be surprised if we see a completely different formation for this match, just because of we have to figure out something something new, a new way of of presenting this because we we haven't been we we haven't been consistent when both Messi and Alba are out. It's been I mean the one time that we saw it. I know that we had Messi for a little bit and Alba for a little bit this last match, but before the match before that, it was it was a disaster, and uh, and we we have to be able to to do something different. And and I don't know, maybe if we have two strikers uh, up front, we don't need our, our 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 right wing and our left wing to be as far up. Maybe they'll play right mid, and that'll kind of give us a little more coverage in the, the defense, and we don't have to have Noah Allen go as as high up. So maybe that's that's their their mentality. Maybe do a, a straight four four two, and and I don't know. There's there's got to be there's got to be something we can we can do to to counteract that. And I wouldn't be surprised if if we get both Joseph and Campana in there. Yeah, I was thinking more on the lines of I, I do like the two strikers up there, but I was thinking what we've I think we've seen it once is Faku and Campana at the striker position. That's what I would like to see. I think we saw last time Martinez doesn't do it for us. Um, so I, I think, obviously, we know what Faku brings to the table. Um, he does he does play well more in, in like that center, in that mid-attack zone there, you know, kind of roaming around. He does do really well in that position. Um, so it's interesting, it's, it's interesting to see what Tata's going to do as far as Faku goes. Because he, he is pretty versatile as far as playing a winger or playing there in the middle. Um, so it, it is going to be interesting, or, or a striker as well. Um, the other thing I want to see is what's Robert Taylor going to do? Are they going to put him back in the right wing like we saw? Are they going to put him in the left wing with Faku as striker, Faku in the middle? Uh, that's going to be, um, as far as my X Factor goes, that's going to be my X Factor. Robert Taylor, see what he's going to do. He burned me in the past. I said... I, I called him my X Factor as well, and he didn't. He didn't show up. He he let me down. But uh, I'm really curious to see what he does this time, especially from what we saw last match. He really stepped up, subbing in for Messi. So um, it's going to be interesting to see if he if he does it again, or if he even starts. Maybe he doesn't even start, but I, th- I think he has to start tomorrow. Or sorry, Sunday. And don't get it twisted. I would I would love to see Faku and Campana be the strikers. I just. I just know Tata has this this obsession with, with finding a way to use Martinez, and I get it; they have history, so I, that's why I'm I'm expecting him to find Martinez into the starting lineup, even if it means setting up next to Campana. I don't think he, I mean, we say it every week. I don't think he can justify keeping Campana off the starting starting eleven. So if he keeps Campana off, I'm I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be super super upset at, at Tata because this is that would just be a, a humongous ta- tactical failure. I totally agree with you. That said, I think he starts Martinez, and I think he arrests Campana. I, it, everything that we're hearing and seeing is U.S. Open Cup final, U.S. Open Cup final, U.S. Open Cup final, and I think that that prefers Campana for that match, even if it means dropping this match or, or at least starting this match with Martinez. And I, I, I disagree with it. I just haven't I, seen any fatigue from Campana. I haven't like, I, I haven't watched Campana and be like, oh, they need to get him out of there because he he's dragging, he's dragging his boots. But like, I have, I haven't, I haven't noticed that. 
and his style of play isn't like this high energy type. Like he's not running around like Kramaski is. Like I understand maybe resting Kramaski, but Campana doesn't play like that. Campana is more composed, and he and he kind of he, he picks his he picks his, his battles and when to charge, and he's again playing that point position that the balls are finding him. I don't think he he's the type of player that really needs all this rest. I I mean you gave him you gave him a, more than a half of rest this last match. I understand that the it's a condensed schedule, but he's not he's not old and and he's gotten a little bit of rest and his style of play I don't think demands all that type of rest. So I I'm sorry I, I don't see any excuse to not have him start this match and the next match. Yes, speaking, uh, we failed to mention, for those that don't know, speaking of resting, so obviously Messi and Jordi Alba are not playing in this match. For those of you who haven't seen the news outlets talk about it, they both suffered a, or re-aggravated an old injury um, that they had from the past last match against Toronto SC last night. So um, right now the, the, the news um Although they're both going to miss uh, the match in Orlando, they're both for the for the U.S. Open uh, final on next Wednesday. So right now, the so it seems like it is an old injury that's just lingering and bothering him. So hopefully, we'll have some more info on that. Even though it's a uh, uh, very uh, like wishy washy the way they report these things, um, but they say it is a lower leg injury right now. Um, so hopefully we'll have some more info soon. So that's why we're talking about who's starting, who's resting, because it's a big question mark. These two main guys are out, are, out, are not out there. So it's, it's a really big topic right now to speak about. Yeah, Messi hurt his posterior, right, Dave? Who knows? <laughs> I've, I've, seen, I've seen all kinds of things reported. He Lower leg, lower extremity, posterior, which as far as I'm concerned, that's his booty. So I, I don't know. I don't know what he hurt, but something. The situation is now booty. Uh, yeah, it, it it's it's so it's gonna be so weird. I I have this just sinking feeling that Martinez is gonna start, and and I hate it because I I, I, I agree. Campana should start every single match and he should play ninety minutes every single match because he's so much better than Martinez. Just accept I, it. That's why I said both of them are gonna start because that way. But the problem is with both of them at the same time. With both of them starting, there's no there's no relief. There's no Robbie relief. Robinson. With a switch of of uh, formation, it, it's like the only solution. I yeah, I'm not sold that he starts both of them. I of of the two options given by you guys, I would prefer Campana and Farias, even Joseph Martinez and Farias, although they're very similar in theory stylistically. Um, Facundo's just at the peak of his form right now, and Joseph is at like the very bottom. I just I just imagine Facundo doing this amazing <laughs> like flare pass to to <laughs> to Joseph and then Joseph just dummies over it. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly right. Um so speaking of who's going to play I, I kind of back to the point of the US Open Cup final, I don't know if that that just really rotates a lot of these players out. I'm really concerned with just the turnaround between Sunday and Wednesday. I don't think the turnaround from yesterday's match, which was Wednesday the 20th, to a Sunday match, because that's kind of a longer break for a midweek to a weekend game. I don't think that break has any bearing over what happens between Sunday, the the game against Orlando, and the U.S. Open Cup final on Wednesday. I think that is its own vacuum of matches. So I... That that's what worries me when I look. When I say that I'm, I go between confident and worried. That's what worries me. Is is that that's so focused on the U.S. Open Cup final? Is is the front office so focused on the U.S. Open Cup final that they're willing to, in, in a way, jeopardize the MLS postseason chase to win hardware? Which I guess in theory is fine, but also we can make the playoffs. I, I'm right. This is the part of the podcast where I'm going to be worried. <laughs> I'll get to the the confident a little bit later, but right now I'm, I'm worried talking about the lineup because there's so much unknown. We go every match kind of with an unknown. Like we think Campana is going to start and score a brace. And then all of a sudden Martinez is starting where he's been awful. 
and we can't really get a read on what that that's going to do which is okay because you you don't want it to become predictable but also you need to give yourself the best chance to win or give yourself the best chance to take a lead and then mix in these players that you want to mix in so that's the part of me that's really worried is is who the heck are we going to put out on the pitch that i mean we have two humongous gaps that we need to find a way to compensate for and i'm very worried about it all i think we'll we'll be able to tell early on when when they release the starting 11 how serious they're taking this this uh playoff push if we do see just a, a cast of misfits and we get the stefanelli's and the robinsons and all of these types of players in there at to start then we know okay then they're they're absolutely just going all in for the for the for the cup but i mean i don't i don't know i, th- I think i think that they're they're too close to be throwing away a match um uh, agreed yeah they're too they, they are too close they're five points away from the ninth spot but if you look at the schedule ahead after the us open uh final we play a lot of key matches where we can make up a lot of these so Orlando, although it is an Eastern Conference team, it's not so important as in it, we're trying to catch up to them. They're, they're on the top. They're in the top of the leaderboard. Um, down the line, we're going to play a handful of games that it is important to win, um, and it really is going to make us get that extra jump. Uh, unlike Orlando, really, obviously the three points are always welcome, but it's not so much the the three for us and and zero for that team right ahead of us. You right. know what I mean? Um, so maybe that's something that they're looking at as well. Obviously, we're going to be able to have a chance to get a trophy next week on Wednesday, and then we could look ahead to these other very, very important matches where we could jump over um, the three, four teams ahead of us and really make that that push that we need. Um, so maybe that's what they're thinking about. Like you said, it's we're going to show it's they're going to show what they're doing as soon as they let that line about line about on Sunday more or Sunday evening. Um, because that you'll you'll see if it's like we said it's a bunch of mis- misfits and you know we, we know what their mindset is so you know what you can it's gonna me. be interesting i you convinced me i want to see stephanelli out there i want to see robbie robinson show me something guys let's see what you can do that would be so amazing <laughs> if Tata throws out uh, the equivalent of a b team even though some of these guys are obviously good if he throws out for all intents and purposes a b team and we come away with with Forget a, a victory with points. A point, yeah. I would be, I would be on cloud nine. The, was it the Kansas City game that they played? The uh, Stefanelli. Yeah. And then I think yeah, Rob Robinson. Robinson was subbed in. No, or was, he was, did he, he start? Started. I don't remember now. He was Robinson started. and Stefanelli. And they did okay. <laughs> they we had, were saying in Alba. our chat that like, they did okay. But they the had Alba. They that's had that's Alba a big X factor. Alba and Yedlin, and I think our team just it's built around those two positions. We, since we don't have a natural replacement for Alba or Yedlin for that matter. It's, it, it really throws us for a loop when we don't have, I mean, I, I sound like a broken record. I feel like I've said this the last three matches, but yeah, when, when we don't have the, those positions, that's when I think that has to figure out an alternative line, an alternative lineup for, for when we're missing those, those spots. So, and, and don't get me wrong. Kansas city is a completely different team than Orlando. Orlando is, is much better than them. So it, it is a different, uh, a completely different team we'll be facing this time around. So I'm not saying that it's going to be the same way, even with these guys starting, it's not. But it's just something to think about. We have seen them start. We have seen them play decent. So who knows? I wonder, I'm looking at the last time we played without Messi and Alba, which was against Atlanta City, which was an absolute disaster. Uh, I wonder if we see the return of Diego Gomez into the starting lineup. Last time we played against Atlanta, or last time we played without Alba and Messi in this Atlanta match, the midfield consisted of Kermaski, Busquets, and Arroyo, which on a normal day sounds very nice. Solid, gives you something in attack, gives you something in defense, overall solid. But Kermaski's playing on the left side with Allen behind him. And Kermaski's always going to be a little bit more forward thinking. Maybe Gomez works his way into the starting lineup if he looks good in training he was supposed to return to training today i didn't see actually any reports that he actually did but i wonder if he is available and if he is if he's fit enough to start a match and starts maybe on the left side of the midfield to provide just a little bit more protection to noah allen in some of the film that we watched atlanta play 
they get numbers up quick. They play typically a 4-2-3-1, which means that they have the ability to get a bunch of those people that are in midfield up the pitch very quickly. Uh, at times, the striker can be isolated, but these these pieces and players that are playing quote-unquote attacking mid, whether it's left side, right side, or center, they can really push up and, and cause a, a numbers problem against the defense. So maybe Gomez would be something, or or not necessarily even Gomez, but just any more box-to-box minded or defensive minded midfielder on the left to, side. It have to be Arroyo. Arroyo and Busquets. That's that's why I think... Yeah, I think those two have, they have to, to be, be on. Yeah. But I, I think the Could, third midf- midfielder, what like maybe Ruiz. I don't think Ruiz was Ruiz. Ruiz started Ruiz last, subbed he on, started last match. Right, he subbed on in the Atlanta match. Uh, came on for Arroyo. You know, I, I just... I don't know. <laughs> this lineup is just... <laughs> It's it's making me most worried. Yeah, because I mean, there's there's innately a panic because Messi's not playing. It is compounded when Alba's not playing. Because in attack, I'm not too concerned. I think we have a very potent attack even without Messi. It is exponentially better when we have Messi, but I still have a lot of confidence in the attack without Messi. It's the defense that is an absolute disgrace when Alba's not there. We got shredded by Atlanta. Noah Allen just, he pushes up too aggressively and then tries to overplay the ball, loses it, and he's literally like by the corner flag and cannot get back and it causes all sorts of problems. And it, it's a huge worry, more so than than messy messy. And we there were a lot of people in the comments last time we talked about this saying, how can you be like disrespectful of Messi and the downgrade from Messi to to Robert Taylor between uh, Alba and, and, and Allen. The thing is, is that our deficiency is in defense. Our deficiency is not in offense. So the defense and specifically Noah Allen is going to be a huge item to watch. It's going to be a huge position to watch when, when the lineup does come out. Yeah, we, we can score. Ooh. We can score without, without Messi. One thing that I would say, like if we did have Messi, I'd feel a little bit better about having Noah Allen out there just because of the attention that Messi draws. It kind of gives the defense a little more wiggle room um, because they have so many eyeballs on Messi. So it the, it, it kind of gives you a little bit more of a of an opportunity to to have some space back there. But we don't have Messi, so Allen will be on an island and he's gonna find himself either in the wrong position, making a bad pass. Or, or taking a bad touch. It's just, it happens very often and, and it's, it's going to continue to happen. There's no, I'd be very, very surprised if, if it changes from one match to the next. So the, the League's Cup uh, match against Orlando, Allen did start back there, but like you said, Messi was in the starting lineup, obviously. So that changes everything, all the tensions on him, but Allen was back there and shoot, we beat him, what was it, 4 1, 3 1? It was 3 1. I think um, when Messi's in the lineup for us, we're able to hold possession of the ball so much more. We saw against Atlanta, not able to hold the ball. That's that's what Messi brings is is a composure when we have the ball. Where whereas when he's not there, we're talking about potentially Robert Taylor on the right side. God forbid. You know, it's it's just that dy- dynamic, and I I feel like I shouldn't have to apologize for saying that Messi out is is a big deal. Because it is a big deal. Like we know that 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 should go without saying. But that that's what worries me as far as we've played without Alba before. But Messi being out uh, again obviously affects a lot of things. But the possession of the ball I think is going to be dramatically different. Last time we played against Orlando in the League's Cup, we had the the possession was fifty nine to forty one in our favor. I think this is way more closer to an even split or even Orlando having the majority of possession. It would, um, to go back to David's point with um, adding that extra piece of defense back there, we've only seen, what, two formations from Tata, more or less, uh, going forward. Could he throw in a third one and copy Orlando's 4-2-3-1 as well? To David's point, just to give a little more help on the defense, it'll allow the wing backs to kind of stay back a little bit. We have our attack in the front. I don't know, Kramaski in the middle, Farias, Robert Taylor, and Campana as striker. That's actually 
to an extent what we saw against Kansas City early in that match. The the lineup came out and it was a 4-3-3, but immediately to start the match, it turned more into a 4-2-3-1 with Robbie Robinson and Stefanelli kind of stepping back and Campana being a little bit more isolated up front. I do think there's some merit to that because, again, when you have then the wingbacks kind of overlapping, there's just more bodies slightly further back that are able to kind of cover if we lose the ball, able to maybe take a, a foul to just stop the buildup. You have a couple more options when when kind of counter-pressing after losing the ball. It's very possible. I, I don't think we're incapable of playing something like that. So looking at Orlando, they, they're kind of just solid at everything. They're not the best at anything in particular. They seem to put balls in dangerous places and get on the end of it and be capable enough to put the ball in the back of the net. We saw a number of set-piece goals in their recent matches that the ball just jostled around in the box and they it, they ended up with it and put it in the back of the net or they kind of just forced errors from the opposition's defense or goalkeeper and they just get on the end of it. And we saw it against, uh, who was it, against Columbus. We saw it against... Uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati and they just they, they cause issues they they're not like the highest scoring team they're not the stoutest defense but they just do everything just good enough to find themselves second in the Eastern Conference I think it's that style of play that they do get under your skin and it does kind of force these players to get a little bit in their heads and and make a little bit of mistakes that they wouldn't normally make and and yeah the ball does seem to just find the left foot of 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 their version of their their Faku Faku Torres and and he has 12 goals on the season so that's that's one person that needs to be marked and yeah we we got um the good news is that we're so weak in set pieces and I and I believe that Orlando is not not one of the best set piece teams is correct I'm pulling, it's a, correct. I'm pulling, just, a, I'm just, pulling a Jose on you right now and be like, it, oh, yeah, it's yeah, correct. It's but Jose. but what I just said is, is like they don't score directly off the set piece. They score off the, the ball madness. bouncing around. The the yeah, the madness. <laughs> right. It's, it's, some people want to watch the world burn and it's Orlando. They throw the ball into the box and just cause havoc. And that, that's how they scored against us in the League's Cup. It was off of a set piece and the ball just kind of bounced around. They ended up crossing it across the box from like one side of the net to the other and got on the end of it and, and scored and it, like they just cause chaos they're they're the chaos lines yeah so i mean when we were doing our research we start i the first thing i always go to is stats i look at the stats and, and see what's going on with that before i start looking at at the film or anything like that so i look at the stats and i tell you guys what what are they good at i, I didn't see anything that they're amazing at you know they're they're top 10 in a lot of in a lot of statistics um, so I'm not, I'm not completely putting them aside. They're good, but they're not great at anything. So my, I, I just kept asking, what are they good at? What are they good at? And we start watching the film. And then the first one we watched was, was the last match where they lost, uh, two Oh, um, there wasn't any, they didn't do anything that match. So I already started saying, Oh, interesting. Then we watched, I think it was a Cincinnati game is the one that we watched next. Um, and then what, what I started noticing is that. They keep the game in front of them. They don't. They don't get blown out, but they also don't do the blowing out. They they don't they don't kill these teams either. They keep the game in front of them. They play they they play like we said in the beginning. They play that that very um, what's the word they use is it's not dirty. It's just it's physical, like uh, physical and aggressive. Physical like a physical kind of aggressive play. It's so, mucky. So it's mucky. Right. It's mucky. They muck it up. Muck. 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 So, so that's the kind of style that we're going to see from them. I think they're, they're going to keep the game in front of them. Now, is our attack going to be able to a blow, a blow up in the floodgates? I, I don't know, maybe, but they are going to keep the game in front of them. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see with that. And yeah. like, uh, like David said, they have their own Faku. They have their own Faku that we have to worry about. He's very good. He's top of the leaderboard and in, in goals scored. He's very crafty, very shifty. Um, he's dangerous with the ball, so defense has to definitely watch out for that. One thing that I did notice when we're watching when we're watching those different matches is that their defensive line seems to allow uh, some some gaps and some room to play, and especially 
when we were watching the the highlights of uh, of how, how we scored on them the last time we played. Uh, we definitely, I don't, again, it's tough to tell. I don't know if they're messy watching or not, but we were able to really carve through them in, in the attack. So hopefully we still see this type of, of, of space because it would be huge for us. I, I think that the, our Facu, Facundo Farias, will, will be able to to really feast in these types of areas, especially with his dribbling um, and his and his flare passes. So hopefully those lanes are still there. Because if if they do give us that space, I don't think that this this is going to be too much of a challenge to get through. Yeah, what was funny is you say that maybe they were messy watching. If they were, they did a bad job because they left Messi wide open. But but again, to to back to the point of them being just good at everything, they're just they're they're, they're like just above average, even at home. They've made their money away actually. But at home, they're seven, four, and three, which is good. You would take that, but it's middle of the table in the Eastern Conference. It is exactly eighth out of fifteen. And they've allowed sixteen goals at home, so a little over one goal per match. And that's to me, that's where we have to exploit them. Is try to be the first team to score, which Orlando has been the first to concede a goal in eight out of their last ten matches overall. Take the early lead or take a lead, right? Go up 1-0, and I'm not saying park the bus because I don't believe in that, but maybe then we we transition from a 4-3-3 into a 4-2-3-1, or maybe we transition into a a more midfield-minded formation, just like we saw against Toronto when Tata switched from five at the back to four at the back or from three at the back to four at the back. And we, we took up the midfield, we set up shop, and we just held possession for long stretches. And granted, Orlando's going to foul the heck out of us. And, and if we try to hold possession for too long, they're going to tackle us and be very aggressive in trying to take it away, especially at home. But Orlando allows goals. And we can score goals. So we need to be the first one to do it. Get an early lead or get a lead, like I said. And then just sort of play solid, play within ourselves. Kind of like how we always say with, with Abilus. Don't do too much. Don't go out of your range and just one, two touch passing. And and we could steal points in this match. We could steal a win in this match. Not just not just a point, but we can get three points if we play within ourselves, play within the system that Tata employs. And we have to take our chances when we get them because Orlando will give us chances. You're on mute, David. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it all—I think it all comes down to who he starts. If if like if we see the right combination of players, we'll 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 believe more that that they're they're gunning for three. But but yeah, I think regardless of of who they start, they they got to feel that they can come away with at least a point in this in this match. I going just before we kind of move on to your point of their line feeling disjointed at times, their defensive line, Orlando's. Maybe that's what Joseph needs. He doesn't have the same burst, but he has the ability to play off the back shoulder. And maybe this is, like, maybe Tata looks at him and is like, this is your last chance to prove that you can still do the things that you did or the things that you are best at, which is getting on the back shoulder of this defensive line, finding the gaps behind. And if we see similar defending to what we've seen in some of these recent matches from Orlando, there's a good chance that he can actually break the line, get some really nice opportunities, and make me a believer. Because right now I'm not. I I have no confidence either. But I think the confidence is a byproduct of Orlando's defense rather than of Joseph's prowess right now. It's not a belief in last match. Joseph. It's last a belief match, in Joseph has the lack ball. of ability. Sorry. Last match, Joseph had the ball. There was nobody around him, and he found a way to to to, to screw that up. I have no confidence they can give him all the space in the world that he can make the right, right decision right now. I hope I hope he proves me wrong. I really do, and I'll apologize in the next episode. But after after what he did the last match and and what he's shown, I'm sorry. I'm. I, how am I supposed to have any kind of confidence that he can do anything with any kind of room? Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. I, I am on the prove me wrong boat 
But I'm just saying, based off of what we've seen from Orlando recently, it's his, it's his best shot, I think. It's his best shot. So let's uh, let's look ahead to, to predictions for this match. I am going to say, I think this might be my lowest score prediction since we've been doing this. I'm going to say... I'm going to say 2-0 Miami wins. I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go next. I'll, I'll leave Dave, Dave Stradamus to the end. We, everyone wants to hear Dave Stradamus, so. Save the best for let's last. Leave, let's leave him as, as a primetime focal, focal point at the end. <laughs> um, so I thought you were about to copy me, and I was going to have to change the score in my head. But you did it. So that's right. I'm going to go with 2-1. Like we said, so obviously I think you, for the listeners out there, you've kind of seen our progression here. When we heard Messi and Alba were out, we are all like, oh, crap, that's not good. We're going to lose. It's Orlando. Oh, my God. Like, we, we freaked out, right? But then we started looking at the stats. We looked at the, at the film, and we kind of calmed ourselves down, right? Before looking at, at all of that, I was ready to say 2-1 loss to Orlando, to tell you guys the truth. But after doing the research, after looking at the film, I'm confident in saying that we're going to win 2-1 against Orlando. We're going to get our three points. We're going to go into our, our U.S. finals match, guns a-blazing with all of our top dogs rested and ready to go. Um, so that's what I got, 2-1. Miami wins it. It's back from the shop, baby. Here we go. Here we go. Dave Stradamus here. All right. Okay, let me rub the helmet. For the first time ever, there's going to be two score predictions here because it does depend on who's starting. If we have a Campana start, we're going to have a 3-1 victory. It's going to be 2-1. We're going to be holding on to our butts, but we're going to have a late a late goal to make it 3-1. However, if Campana does not start, we're looking at a 1-1 draw. Actually... I would be fine with a one-one draw. <laughs> That's true. Listen, I think if you're a Miami fan, you would be happy with points, knowing that Messi and Alba did not play this match. You'll be happy with points. So I thank Dave Stradamus for being so favor, uh, so so fortuitous, giving us such a favorable prediction, or whatever. <laughs> uh, so before before we wrap. Um, some some news did come out today about uh, Argentina's upcoming international matches that I think are are pertinent. Um, so, sorry, let me just pull it up. Here. So Argentina's upcoming matches uh, against Paraguay and Peru have officially been confirmed to be played on Thursday, October twelfth, and Tuesday, October seventeenth. The Inter Miami matches around that international break take place on the 7th and the 18th, with the 7th being at home against FC Cincinnati and the 18th being at home against Charlotte. Two big matches, as we'll be really at the very end of the season. Um, FIFA requires, I believe, a five-day period if you're sending them to a match, so that would fall right in line with that game against Cincinnati heading into it on October 7th. Um, and then the Charlotte match is just one day after the scheduled uh, Peru Argentina game. So if Messi is even present at that at that Peru game, he will definitely not be available for Charlotte. Um, it will be it remain to be seen if Inter Miami maybe keep Messi uh, for the the match on the seventh against against Cincinnati, and then he would miss the game against Paraguay, a game that is played in Argentina. I find that. Difficult to believe. I, I think I, they'll be kind of strong-armed into having to send him. So these are two matches, two potentially difficult matches. Um, Charlotte, not so much as Cincinnati, but it's gonna be it's gonna be rough, and that's gonna be real crunch time. Uh, we'll, we'll obviously know much better heading into these matches, but that's gonna be rough. Cincinnati might not have much to play for at that point, but that doesn't mean that they're not gonna want to beat us especially in Miami. Um, so that's just some information to keep an eye out for. In, in a couple weeks, it'll be much more pressing. Uh, but I did want to bring it up because that information was released today. Uh, and and it affects it affects the long-term 
outlook on on the MLS playoffs. Um, but with that being said, our match reaction uh, will be live right after the match against Orlando on Sunday. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell on YouTube so that you are made aware of when that occurs. Also, uh, we are on our Twitter pretty much all match giving live updates at the Heads. So make sure to drop us a follow if you are interested in not just match live match updates, but also we just I, I'm, I'm out there just tweeting all the time about anything Inter Miami related or remotely related to the sport. Uh, so give us a follow if you are interested in that. And otherwise, thanks so much for listening to the end. Uh, thanks for tuning into the YouTube or listening wherever you are listening on audio. We appreciate you, uh, and we'll catch you on Sunday with the champagne bottles and pots and pans. Thanks for tuning into the Hair and Heads podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. Mm-hmm.